Hello, I'm Ultimate Reviews, and I've been on hiatus for far too long, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Thanks for all being patient with me. As you can probably agree, 2020 wasn't great, and it's not looking much better this year. However, animated movies really pulled through and brought us some really good things in spite of everything. And luckily this year doesn't look to be too much different in that aspect, with a ton of different stuff announced from various studios that looks very promising. One film that's been on my radar uh, since it was announced is the latest Studio Ghibli film. And I wasn't super excited for it like I have been for Raya and the Last Dragon or Luca or the Bob's Burgers movie. But I was, let's just say, cautiously optimistic. The concept sounded interesting and it certainly seemed to have a lot of creativity, at least judging from the trailer. I didn't notice any major problems in the trailer and I haven't seen a Ghibli film yet that I didn't like. So on to the actual film itself. The story is fairly straightforward. Based on the book of the same name, Earwig and the Witch follows an orphan girl named Earwig who is adopted by a cruel and selfish witch to be her assistant. And Earwig agrees, believing that she will be able to learn magic for herself, and if not, she can just escape. Although escaping seems to be a challenge, and she's not learning as much magic as she'd hoped. Which leads to her butting heads with the witch. While she's there, she bonds with the witch's familiar, who's a cat named Thomas, a powerful demon-like monster who terrifies even the witch, known as the Mandrake, and eventually even the witch herself. And that's about it. Yeah, the story is very simple, which isn't ordinarily a problem for Ghibli. Many Ghibli films do have rather self-contained and small slice of lifey stories, with a bit of fantasy thrown in there for flavour. And that works quite well, but I feel like though, with those, the premise and setting are simple and down-to-earth, but the stuff that happens is more fleshed out. The characters will go to different places and meet interesting people and come across strange creatures or situations. This doesn't really do that. Once Earwig meets the witch, it mostly takes place inside this one location, being the witch's house. And there's only really four characters we really get to know up throughout the course of the film. And there's only so many times you can see the same couple of rooms over and over again before it stops being interesting. If it had more rooms or they left it once in a while to go to places, maybe to deliver the potions or something, I think it would have been a lot more engaging. On top of that, the ending feels very rushed. In most stories like this, the sort of evil character starts to warm up to the new main character, and they become closer slowly over the course of the film. But this goes from they completely despise each other to suddenly they're all good in about five minutes. And then they end the film with this flash forward to a few months and without giving too much away, a character shows up out of nowhere and before they have a chance to really explore it, the movie just ends. I think it could have benefited from another 50 minutes or so. I don't think an hour 22 was nearly enough time to explore everything they could have with this concept. That being said, there is plenty of stuff I like about the story. I like the backstory of the Mandrake and the two witches band and how that ties into Earwig. The, and the whole theme of rock music in general complements the film's tone very well. And I do like seeing Earwig grow to understand magic more as the movie goes on. But I think the bones of the story could definitely use some retooling, and it could definitely have benefited from a longer runtime and some more variety. How do the how do the characters fare? Well, they are definitely stronger than the story, so that's a plus. Ewig is your typical headstrong, energetic, and slightly impulsive and defiant kid character, but she's probably one of the better examples of that character type. She's got enough personality as to not be bland, but isn't also not over the top annoying either, when most kid characters usually fall into one of those two categories. But again, Ghibli is usually better at striking that balance with their kid characters anyway. She also has this adorable friendship with a kid from the orphanage who she calls Custard, and I would have liked to see more of them reacting to the magic together. I like how they first get to the house and the witch tries to scare her into being her assistant. She immediately gets the exact opposite reaction she was expecting. Like, even she's surprised at how enthusiastic she is about it, because she thinks she'll still be able to learn magic. 
I thought that was pretty funny, and little moments like that definitely help a character along. The witch character is kind of a standard spiteful old witch character who just wants to, someone to be an extra pair of hands and not much else. Like, she's fine as the antagonist, but she's not as memorable as Yubaba or the Witch of the Waste. But her back and forth with Earwig and her backstory with the Mandrake and this other character, I won't say because spoilers, is fairly interesting. But the bigger problem with her is that she doesn't really provide any significant threat. Like, they could have had her be more intimidating and... That might have given the film a greater sense of stakes, as the stakes feel very low. But all she really does is, uh, in terms of the threat, is use worms, which, like, is the least evil thing the twits do in their book. But, like, I guess she's fine. The Mandrake is a much better character, being intimidating and powerful, but also having this soft spot for Earwig, which makes him keep the witch, who's afraid of him, off her case. Although he doesn't do much besides that other than kind of just mope around. And there's Thomas the Cat who is a talking cat and helps Earwig. And he wasn't particularly memorable. But I like how they included him so it gave Earwig someone to talk to. But I think Custard could probably have served that role better. They're not the strongest group of characters but they could have been a lot worse. I didn't hate any of them. They didn't get on my nerves. But they certainly could have been a bit stronger. Now, if you've seen the trailer for this movie, it probably caught your attention for the same reason as me. The fact that it uses CGI rather than Ghibli's usual hand-drawn. Now, CGI can work surprisingly well using the anime style, even a very Ghibli-looking style. Lupin 3, for example, looks amazing, and it's an anime movie that uses CGI. And the next Ghibli film looks to be hand-drawn, so I don't object to them using CGI, despite it being overused with modern animated films. For a first time using CGI, it's fine. Not the best, but there's enough creativity with the magic animation and the characters move okay. But it's very noticeable that this is the first time the studio made a fully computer animated film. There is kind of a weird quality to some of the movements, and the models do look off at times with some awkward expressions. But overall, it's not too distracting. It does its job fine. Like, it's not par with, on par with the hand-drawn films, but it's not like scary godmother or anything. Now I would like to state that despite my criticism I do like this movie and I can't say I was disappointed because I wasn't going in with particularly high expectations but I do feel like this had a lot of potential like it feels like they ended the movie halfway through it and if and they're missing a huge chunk of the story. If it had kept going past that point and we would gotten to see how the characters uh, how the character showing up plays out it could have been really interesting. Add a few more locations and some colourful characters for Earwig to interact with, and it could have been on par with some of the other Ghibli films. Not one of their absolute best, but definitely decent. As it stands, however, it's probably on the lower end, which for Ghibli is pretty rare. I'd give it a 5, which on my score means it's just okay. I still enjoyed it, I'm just not in a hurry to watch it again. If you're a Ghibli fanatic like me and you have to see all the films at least once, I'd say go for it. There's nothing awful in it, I wouldn't call it a waste of time. If not, I'd say check out some of their other films instead. I recommend Kiki's Delivery Service. It's, a, uh, it's similarly about a young girl moving to a new place to learn new magic, but it takes it in a different direction and honestly better developed direction. That just about wraps it up. It feels weird that this would be the first Ghibli film I've reviewed here. I would have expected to start with one of the more well-known films like Spirited Away or Totoro, or maybe start with my personal favourite when Marnie was there. But I definitely plan to get to those eventually. In the meantime, I look forward to posting other reviews and other projects, uh, so stay tuned for that and maybe consider subscribing if you haven't done so already um, and you're interested to see more reviews. With that said, I'll see you in my next video. Peace out.